So I just like threw some like olive oil and like a little bit of vinegar in there and I like shook it all up. So I got a bunch of chicken in the sink marinating. It's either going to taste really good or it's going to be able to peel paint off the wall. <laughs> One of the two. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we've got MCU cameo rumors. Ooh, they're intensifying. Man, this is the rumor mill, if I've ever (laughs) heard one before in my life. Uh, General Thrawn might have an actor in the upcoming Soap show. All right. All right. Michael B. Jordan is doing his own Superman. Michael B. Superman. Yes, and more. And more. <laughs> I know Spe- I was going to. Uh, oh, no, go ahead. Go right into it. I was going to. Speaking of Michael B. Jordan, Mike, <laughs> uh, I, I did make a. I felt I followed through on a promise earlier this week. I think it was Monday, <laughs> I believe, even. Um, I turned on Space Jam A New Legacy uh, because I hadn't got to watch it. I'm like, I'm going to watch it. Um, my wife's a big fan of the other one. I remember watching the other one when I was a kid, and you know, you kind of briefly talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, if, if you're if, if you're not watching this, you're interested. Skip ahead. We have time codes. But I will tell you, I have watched two Nicolas Cage movies this year so far mm-hmm. that are by far way fucking better than this movie. <laughs> could ever hope and, to be and he's not even talking about that brand new nicholas cage yeah. movie, pig that's actually supposed to be good no, i'm talking <laughs> willie's wonderland and and well, i don't remember what the other one was uh wasn't jujitsu yeah yeah yeah, yeah jujitsu good lord but space <laughs> jam a new legacy is uh atrocious it's a slap to the face you said mediocrity this is well below <laughs> mediocrity mike uh i i I, I don't know how I don't remember how I put it to you, but like this again, this is just a big commercial, right? For mm-hmm. for Warner Brothers properties, and even then, it just it just fails on all levels, man. I I didn't care the whole time. I tried to have a good time with the characters. It just nothing succeeded. Nothing hit. I think there was like maybe one joke early on uh, whenever he first met up with Bugs Bunny, but like. Any charm and originality that the first movie had, gone in this one. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, he made some he made some bad guys out of uh, scans of basketball players. Whereas the other one was like, oh, there was actually like a subplot where like, those people had their powers stolen and were trying to find out where it went the whole time, right? Yeah. Like, there was... N- I don't know. Yeah, this, I, I, I avoid I, it, this movie like the plague is what it, I'm trying to tell people. It's kind of weird to overanalyze the Space Jam movie, and uh, people are just going to have to prepare themselves that a superhero slate is not a safe space for a Space Jam, a new legacy fan. No. Uh, but I think the biggest difference between this movie and the last one is the villain of the first movie is a cartoon character. So it just, everything makes so much more sense why everything devolves into a basketball game, because it's all about tunes and like cartoons and like Michael Jordan gets wrapped up in all of this kooky craziness right but in this one it's like there's like an artificial intelligence algorithm that's trying to, oh my god that's trying to pull all this off and it's just like I get it it's a kids movie but it's just like you had to, you had to try so hard just to get this to a basketball game and well, I feel like you didn't have to try so hard it, and I mean yeah it I saw him throw away a Game Boy at the start of this movie, and mm-hmm. I'm like, even if he wasn't gonna play Game Boy anymore, ain't no kid throwing away a Game Boy in, <laughs> in the 90s. But um, I said, here, I found the tweet I sent you. Uh, in Space Jam 2, the words Warner Brothers were shown or said 38 times. That's 10 times the amount of baskets LeBron James made in the entire movie. Than he was four. <laughs> so where is the actual jam at in this, right? Where's the Space Jam, if you will? <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, he, they even made the old lady do the matrix thing twice. Oh yeah. That's, that's how unoriginal it was. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, I'm looking back on our, our chat here and I'm like, oh my gosh, this Don Cheadle should have his Emmy nomination revoked. for this. <laughs> well. But, but I, I just got to say like, you know, I, I know you were like, kind of like, oh, it's mediocre. You know, and that's the worst. I, I, below that. This is offensive. <laughs> uh, uh, like, even like. 
when you do like the crossovers like what lego movie did like right the brand merging mm-hmm. the brand mixing that was fun it had a purpose right it was like oh they're all legos they're all here in this lego world and this is like oh in this computer server exists all the properties as different planets if you will and that just happens to be how they look i, I don't know it was it was no fun and I, <laughs> I i feel bad watching it and i feel bad for anyone else who watched it so um yeah, that's what I gotta watch this week, Mike. I, I've been working on my house. I, I've been telling Mike about it. He's seen all the results. Uh, I've got some uh, weddings to attend to the next couple weeks, um, and uh, so we've been trying to get some house stuff done rather than absorbing content. I I do. Maybe I can. Add, you want me to add it here, Mike, or you want me to add it on the end here about that game I've been playing. Oh, um, you go go ahead. Let me know right now, man. Okay. Well, so I've been playing the new MOBA, a multiplayer online battle arena called Pokemon Unite. Uh, on Nintendo Switch, and are you familiar? I'm not as familiar with MOBAs. I, as I have literally are. no idea what this is. I know okay. what MOBAs are, but I do not know what this is. So it, it's it's like League of Legends. I played the game Smite with friend of the show Quentin. Mm-hmm. Um, you go out and you kill uh, these wild enemies and get points, and then you go cash these points in on the enemy side, right? While also the enemies are trying to do the same thing and and can attack and kill you. So in this one, you actually play with Pokemon characters who all serve different purposes so it's a very much an online game um in the late in the vein of league of legends or um defense of the ancients dota 2 kind of stuff uh but you know it's, it's been fun but i will tell you if you want to see an overly monetized pay to win game <laughs> this is this is up your alley like they're like you can up you can upgrade items to equip to your character they give you stat advantages well if you don't have enough tickets that you got in game you can actually just exchange money to upgrade them like right out the gate and i'm like this this is kind of pointless so um that i think that's a sucky part but if you're a fan of uh pokemon or mobas maybe give it and you have a switch you can try it. it'll be out on mobile i think in a month or two so you can play it on your phone i don't know how that'll go but um i've been getting into that a little bit trying to um use my switch a little bit more and play um also mario golf as, as my downtime so chip on the greens mike you've been watching more stuff than i have it looks like you've had a little more free time uh, other than some adventures you had, uh, what you got going on here? Yeah, man. Well, it's that time of the year where the Olympics has finally rolled around. So this is a, the good a time as any to uh, dust off that Peacock subscription. We've yet to have one in this household. So we finally uh, bit the bullet and paid for, at the very least, a month of Peacock because, you know, we wanted to check out some of the Olympic stuff. And uh, right off the bat, I don't know what's going on. I do not I do not know how to use this app when it comes to the Olympics. It's so confusing. I was kind of, I kind of thought the pitch to uh, people out there was get Peacock and watch all the Olympics you want. But I know it's in Japan, but there is some time zone crossover. So I feel like when I open up this app in like the afternoon, I don't know how to live stream the Olympics. Like, how do I just like watch the Olympics that are happening right now? It gives me tons of replay options. I can replay and rewatch a lot of the stuff that has already happened. But like, I want to be like in the zeitgeist. I want to be there watching live and seeing what's happened. And like the Peacock interface, it's just very confusing. Like if you go to like the Olympics, like landing page, there's just like a thousand tiles that all like some of them are like three minutes long some of them are like i saw one video that they suggested watching that was only like 30 seconds long and i was like by the time my roku buffers this video like the 30 seconds of my attention span is already out the window so i'm still trying to figure out how to navigate the app to properly watch the olympics but one thing that you can do while you're on Peacock is actually watch some pretty good stuff. There's a show from uh, Michael Schur, the uh, creator of Parks and Rec and some other really, really uh, popular TV shows called Rutherford Falls, which is a Peacock original starring Ed Helms. And it's this really funny show so far. We're only a couple episodes in, uh, only one season out right now, but it's just about Ed Helms. He plays this guy who is obsessed with the history of the town that he lives in because his uh, ancestors uh, founded this small town uh, on the East Coast. I think it's uh, in like upstate New York or something like that. But then he starts clashing kind of with the local like native population, but like he knows them all because they all grew up there. So it's all really, really funny uh, from some really great creators. And there's a lot of uh, Native uh, American representation in it too, which is strange because it's crazy that this entire country uh, was basically like stolen from the Native Americans, but we hardly ever really see good representations of them on television so i think this is a step in like a really great direction and it's really interesting so 
and check out Rutherford Falls. But also, if you want to slide back in time, if you will, uh, my wife absolutely lost it when I told her that this show was on Peacock because she she will not stop talking about this show. She's like, oh, you've never seen this show before? How have you never seen this show before? So I finally sat down and watched the first two episodes of the classic Sliders. Have you ever yeah. heard of this show, oh, Chris, Sliders? Uh, I actually saw it at, um, at Barnes & Noble on... Um Friday evening, I went to Barnes and Noble, and uh-huh. uh, there was a DVD <laughs> okay. uh, of uh, of the the show Sliders. And I'm I like, mean, surprise, I was, surprise! I mean, yeah. this show ran for like five seasons, and I barely knew anything about it. I don't remember the exact date that it came out, but I it, it feels early '90s for sure. Um, and we just started dipping our toes in it. But it's just like you totally see a lot of the inspiration, the, a lot of the sci-fi inspiration that just things like Rick and Morty would have pulled from, from Sliders. It's just all about uh, the, the actor Jerry O'Connell, who is yep. basically uh, like a college-age student uh, at this point in time. And he just develops this device that lets him slide between, like, parallel universes. Uh, So every episode is, like, just a different interpretation of the Earth that he lives on. And in the first episode, the um, there are two worlds that they visited. One briefly was like the ice version of his neighborhood. Like I guess theoretically something happened and everything got covered in ice. And then they get slid into a world where like what if the Nazis won and they occupied like San Francisco, the Bay Area. So a lot of really fun stuff. And they must go through a lot of different scenarios because there's five seasons and this is like a network drama. So I think there's like at least like 15 episodes episodes a season if not more so i don't know how much more we'll dive into sliders but it was nice to get kind of just to get the um just get my bearings of just like where a lot of uh these ideas have come from and a lot of them have come from sliders yeah and i remember uh because that's like a 90s show right it wasn't early Mm -hmm. 2000s it was 90s like uh the Mm -hmm. guy who played uh Gimli was in it, right? Uh, John Rhys Davis. Yeah, that's who he is i was trying to figure out who that guy was the whole time i was i was talking with some friends um yesterday about the show and i was like yeah there's like this Pavarotti looking guy in it and i'm like yeah, yeah. And i guess yeah that's gimli yeah, yeah he i mean he's also in you know uh, lord, uh, not lord of the rings uh, Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones. He was his friend in Indiana Jones. Yeah, Indiana, I, uh, Indiana yeah. Jones was the one thing that I could pull from. I was like, yeah, he was in Indiana Jones movie, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I remember that because it was on, I believe, um, I think it was, was it a Sunday night show? I don't remember, but I remember Sliders and, like, you know, you know, coming back and reading a lot of Marvel, especially Loki multiverse, multi-universes mm-hmm. stuff, um, different Earths. This is uh, very much... Um, I, this isn't the original film, but it feels very much like a video version of that early on. Yeah. I remember the effects being kind of... Oh, yeah. The, 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 the effects are very, very funny, but in a kind of a... Like, in a, you know, like, oh, look at them. Bless their heart. This is the best that they could do back then. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember. So, yeah. I'm just, I'm just always surprised because I always think that how niche sci-fi was back in the day, just how m- much more accepting pop culture has been when it comes to these like very like kind of broad abstract ideas but uh back then sliders five seasons wow good for them uh yeah. so uh w- oh another world sorry there was opposite world where you stop at green lights and you go through red lights so some of them aren't as drastic as the other ones but my wife was just like oh yeah there's one where the red lights were different and that was just really drilled into her brain so <laughs> got to watch sliders on peacock but another streaming service that you may or may not have is apple plus I guess go out and buy a new MacBook or an iPhone. You'll get a whole nother year of it. But uh, Ted yeah. Lasso season two, it's back. It's out there. Now is the uh, good as time as any to um, hop on Apple Plus and start uh, start watching Ted Lasso because it's great and I love it. And uh, so that's just a PSA for Ted Lasso and how much I love the show. I mean, we talked about the Emmys a little bit last week. Ted Lasso has been nominated for literally anything that I think it could possibly qualify for. So you got a good pedigree for that show over there. But but last up here brand new to netflix it's a uh, kevin smith's master of the universe that uh revelations i think is this the yes. semicolon after it and it's the new he-man show that's a continuation of the old lore of when it was just a big commercial to sell toys mm-hmm. uh so it's very strange because you get to see all of these characters that still very much look like they were designed to sell like you know hunks of plastic i think i described it as like all of these chonky characters but they are uh, in direct conflict with the very 
very dramatic story that Kevin Smith has brought to this uh, new series. And you, there is very much a revelation at the end of the first episode. And if anybody's interested in giving it a try, watch at least the first two episodes. It just kind of really sets up where it's going to go. Um, I might, I might check it out. I might, I might watch War. I, I might watch more. I have no nostalgia for He Man, but I think what they're pivoting to looks pretty interesting. So yeah, if you were ever wanted to dip your toe in He-Man. Now's not a bad time either. Mm-hmm. Masters of the Universe are revelations. I think they are billing this as part one is out, and then there's going to be a part two later. So I guess there could be another opportunity for you to jump back in maybe later in this year. But yeah, it's strange. It's so weird because it's like back when it was to sell toys, they went as cheap as possible in, on the animation because they just yeah. wanted the best return on their investment well, when it came to toys. Now it's like the it's like the literal opposite I don't know if there's really any toys scheduled for the show, but the animation is from Powerhouse Studio, the same studio that made the Castlevania TV show and some of the other stuff. So you have like these really like highly polished like action sequences with like these like rippling muscles that were drawn on every frame. And it's just like, wow, this is intense. This is what the kids back in the day really wanted. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it's it's a lot like it reminds me of like G.I. Joe, Mask, mm-hmm. hell, even Transformers, right? That animation back then was not good, but they were selling toys left and right. And it's funny you, you bring this up because, you know, this is on Netflix this week. Next week is the third part of the Transformers War for Cybertron series mm-hmm. on Netflix. So, like, they are milking those 80s uh, toy, <laughs> toy series uh, for this kind of stuff. So... Um, yeah, I've I've uh, I've seen some discourse online, but there's only five episodes, right? How 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 long are they? Do you know? Uh, they're I mean they're anywhere from like I think twenty to thirty. Okay, so they're they're pretty digestible episodes. Because mm-hmm. when I saw five, I'm like, oh, they're obviously probably an hour long. Um, so that's good. That they're, they're shorter kind of kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I might I might give that a go. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But you know, let's go ahead and jump into the news, Mike. We're here for news. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, before we get that, someone did say. They need you to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch because that's related to the show and you keep talking about shows you're not watching on the show. Mm. So, But there's only like, I think, two or three episodes left of it. So it's a good time for you to jump in. The Bad Batch. Yeah, All Star right. Wars Bad Batch. Um, it's getting up there. It's getting up. I can't believe it's almost at the end. I went through a whole season of Loki in the middle of it. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, those are out. Anyway, into it. Uh, Dune, the sci-fi movie that, you know, uh, from the 80s that people either love or hate or can't finish one of the two uh, is getting remade at Denis Villeneuve, Denis Villeneuve. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He <laughs> did Blade Runner 2049, right? Or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, it's not signs. It's the arrival movie. Uh, really good sci-fi stuff. Uh, the official main trailer for Dune is released. Uh, this is a three and a half minute trailer for this movie and it showcases characters and actions. And I actually went ahead and wrote this down here. So I'm like, I wrote this description so I can like, this makes sense for what I read from the book and then kind of mm. what I saw here. So the Atreides family are to take over and watch the planet Arrakis, uh, which is also the planet Dune because of all the sand, right? And mm. they, they harvest a spice um, and the spice unlocks the mind gives people like, I don't know, like abilities to traverse space navigation, stuff like that. Like that's why this, spice is very important mm-hmm. um but the uh, re- previous family the harkonnens want revenge for losing control of this planet uh and then the main character is paul atreides played by timothy chalamet and he leads the film on his journey through the planet dune there's a lot more in here and it's a lot more like game of thrones the more you dig into it um but you brought up a good point here is this a part multi-part movie uh, yeah, yeah that's that's the movie. vibe that I got because when I was watching this trailer, I was like, "This is some like really heady sci-fi, right? This is this seems like a lot to put into one trailer. A lot of concepts, a lot of ideas, and plus, they're really I, I have no idea what Dune is, so I'm sure yep. you could tell me whether this is right or wrong. But I don't want you to because it would be a spoiler. But it definitely seems like a um, Timothy Chalamet is a character that's going to be like switching sides and helping uh, Zendaya with whatever clan or city or whatever she's attached to and I, that seems like a story that might take a little bit to tell so it just really seems like I feel like there's going to be another movie after this so um, there there are ways you can split this story in two uh, mm-hmm. based on the book uh, and what everything I've seen in this trailer except for one clip seems to be pretty early on in this movie 
mm-hmm. uh, or in the book. Um, and you know, they could be say like the stuff in the end is definitely a different kind of story. Um, the, the second half. So I, I could be wrong. We could be seeing that, but you know, there have been rumors that there is a second part of this movie, um, somewhere else. Now, the only reason I would say no, there's it's, they're going to, they're going to do it all. They're only teaching us to some of the, the bigger pieces early on is because there's like 20 books in this franchise. Um, and they could easily make the second one uh, the the sequel, right? Rather than mm. than try to split the well, first one it's up. Warner Brothers, kind of uh, HBO Max, uh, whoever is in charge of all this. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, like in a year or so, like, oh, there's going to be a spinoff where there'll be an HBO Max original well, series. They, they've already they've uh, already announced that. <laughs> they, they announced that a long time ago. Oh, wow. It's yeah. been so, – like, I'm so unattached to Dune. How could I remember any of this? Yeah. But also at the same time, since I legitimately forgot it, it makes me look really good, though, right, that I'm making yeah. these predictions and get, being uh, automatically assured that I got them right seconds so, later? So the, I guess the difference is here it's not made by Warner Brothers. The uh, Dune is a legendary film, and it's mm-hmm. only distributed by Warner Brothers. So that's – I don't, I don't know what legendary I, I don't have enough legendary knowledge to mm-hmm. say that one way or the other but uh, Warner Brothers um, did piss them off pretty much by doing the simultaneous release mm-hmm. on HBO Max um, mm-hmm. so on October 22nd you can watch it in theaters or you can watch it in um, on HBO Max with the, the ad free subscription um, and you know they were pretty mad because they were like this is going to make a lot of money and now we're going to lose a lot of money so I don't know what's happened along the way for that but there was a um, uh, uh, like a like a prequel uh, series or two announced for this so um, we, we I think it was supposed to start filming last year but we'll see I don't, it probably got delayed due to the pandemic so we'll see where that comes into it um, but uh, you, you saw this trailer, right? You watched it. Uh-huh. Did you have it? Is, is this for someone who's, who doesn't know a lot? Do you feel intrigued by this trailer or do you feel meh or nah? Like, I, feel where, where do you su- lead I feel sufficiently intrigued. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it looks great. Like it looks beautiful uh, and a lot of familiar faces, right? Uh, yeah. uh, it's been, it's, it's been a while since I've seen uh, Jason Momoa on the big screen. Yeah, but we got to see him in the desert in Aquaman, so we know he's gonna do great here in this desert. Yes, exactly. That's how that's how Hollywood works, right? Yeah, uh, Thanos himself uh, in there as uh, oh yeah, Josh Brolin. Yeah, Josh Brolin, uh, his dad, uh, Moon Knight. I mean, we could we could tie these to comic book places <laughs> all day in here. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm intrigued to watch this again. I've not finished the first one recently. Uh, I got kind of tired <laughs> watching <laughs> it, so I'm like, I gotta go back. But I'm interested to see how they do this because. The, the 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 thing is with the original book there's a lot of like descriptions of what the characters are thinking not saying mm-hmm. so how do you do that in a movie right like how do you without just doing voiceover the whole movie yeah, it's uh, pensive so. looks man pensive yeah. looks <laughs> well the the thoughts are actual like related to the story so i'm i'm interested to see how they they pull that off um and, and do that Switching back over, back to some Marvel news. Black Widow. Uh, apparently, one of the Black Widows will appear in Shang-Chi, according to uh, Marvel Studios themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the uh, actress, uh, let's see here. Did it, is it going to pull it up here? Uh, it's in It's in here, actually, in this feed of the live stream uh, of it. I didn't mean to put the main one in there. I'll have to go dig it out later. Mm-hmm. But one of the Black Widows, actress, uh, she's, um, she uh, is, I believe, from China and will be... Uh, being in Shang Chi, and I'm pretty sure uh, she'll probably be in the fight tournament. If I was a bad man, right? Like, yeah, it doesn't seem like a bad place to put her. Right? It seems like something that they would get messed up in, and I, I would assume it's one of the Black Widows that probably got a little bit of FaceTime. Right? We there was definitely some like background widows uh, in some of those shots that didn't really matter, but a couple of them were like featured widows. Like, you don't have really a line, but you know, we'll we'll do some close ups on your face. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she had a talking point. Um, but uh, and I think the one that they're they're uh, doing it has like also like a background in like f- some sort of fighting style or something like that. Like, that's why she was you know hired as one of the black ones. But I assume she's one of the free ones. Uh, Jade Zhu X U was born in China. Is a multiple wushu champion. Uh, and we'll have a brief cameo. So, um, I, I again, I think she'll probably be free and trying to find her way in the world, and that may be you know where she ends up in this town of uh, mm-hmm. you know fighting. I, I'm excited to see the fight scenes again, uh, if not only for the abomination versus Wong, but whoever uh, Shang Chi is probably going to fight. I believe uh, Zhao Ling, his sister, in that. So hopefully we can see some cool stuff. So uh, that was that was pretty interesting. 
We're going to switch gears into the animation world with Disney streaming Marvel Studios on there. Um, Marvel's VP of film, Victoria Alonso, has promised us another season of What If already. All another right, 10 episodes. Right. Uh, that means they probably got pretty good faith in it, right? Like, they're like, yeah, we, we like this. Or mm-hmm. do, you, do you think it's like how animation studios have been lately? Like, we wrote 20, we're doing 10 at a time. Uh, and releasing ten and like part one, part two, or season one, season two, like but we we did yeah, them all I, at once. I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a lot less ri- like it's weird to say like less risk with animation considering uh, the production time is so much longer. But since you don't have to bring any of these actors in like in front of a camera, you just put them in front of a microphone. And now, especially after the pandemic, uh, the location that these people need to be are is so much less rigid, right? And you've already kind of built out a lot of these rigs and models. And even though uh, a what if. Uh, really should be in unique places in every different episode. You know, they probably got like a pipeline, you know, figured out. So it's probably just a lot easier to green light a, you know, yeah. a second season. I, I think I'm more curious of just like, is, are, are they just going to be a little bit more freewheeling with the second season, right? Because we've been getting a lot of hints moving forward that like this isn't just kind of like a random, like one off animated show that you could probably just ignore. It, it, you know, I'm not saying I would, but, you know, if somebody no. didn't want to be a, you know, a completionist, they could probably skip it. But that we keep hearing reports of like, oh, no, this is going to be tied into like this uh, multiversal thing. Uh, we might see some of these characters pop up, you know, who knows who will reprise what roles what will pop in uh but you know it seems like if they were to solve maybe any of these nexus problems wouldn't that mean uh, season two wouldn't happen yeah. right like oh no we fixed the problem we fixed this uh, shattering timeline uh they're, yeah. we, they're, so maybe they'll just be a little less rigid in well, season two it could be i also don't think they'll solve the problem of that uh we we've seen spawn out of loki really the mm-hmm. fracture i think that will I don't think that that will get solved anytime soon, but I can also see them like, oh yeah, we're putting out another what if next year already kind of thing. Like, you know, like, oh yeah, we got it for next year before we even solve that issue down mm-hmm. the road. So it could, it could be either one. Uh, again, I also think that maybe they could have written a bunch of scripts, had them record a bunch of lines early on and like, oh, we're going to do these first and then these second kind of thing um, build towards it. But yeah, who knows? She also did say that there are more animated projects on the way mm-hmm. and a mini studio on the horizon for them. Um, one of the rumored projects is an, a Deadpool series, an animated Deadpool series for this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they could go back to animated movies. Again, they didn't have as much luck with their other ones as DC has lately. But, you know, if they're wanting to, again, expand their horizons, maybe bounce off what if, right? They could make more movies along the way rather than just TV yeah. series. It so. makes you wonder. It makes you wonder where a, a theoretical Deadpool series would go, right? There was that one that was uh, in production, at least mm-hmm. in pre-production, at some point in time with uh, Donald Glover, right? And it was yep. going to kind of have this edge to it. I believe it was going to land on FX. Now things have totally changed and moved in different directions. So hopefully, a Deadpool series would not na- not land on Disney Plus. I don't think they would be able yeah. to do a sufficient job of encapsulating Deadpool on Disney Plus. But you know, hey, they have a controlling stake in uh, Hulu, and it doesn't seem like Hulu's right. going anywhere. So you could put it up there on Hulu, right? Right. Well, they could. But if it's an MC, if they if they're gonna really tie it in MCU, they could put it on Disney Plus. Um, I, I was really hoping they would do in America what they did in the other countries and do that wasn't the Disney st- or the the star on Disney Plus, which is uh-huh. like the the adult area where they merge like they essentially merged Hulu and Disney Plus over there. Mm-hmm. Like they had star like I would love to see Disney Plus have star and be like, yeah, here's your you know PG thirteen and higher kind of content uh, in there. But you know, I, I don't know. There, there's a, there's a lot of things you do. that's a rumor it was the Deadpool, but like I would like to see more. Um, Again, animation come out of Marvel if they're going to start putting stuff on streaming, right? Like, that would be a great place to put that kind of stuff because they're not going to really – I don't think they'd, they'd put any of their things in the theater, really, if they, they would thought about it. So um, hopefully we see that sooner than later. But speaking of the What If series, uh, the rumor is that uh, Haley Atwell will be uh, Captain Carter as a cameo in that film. Uh, which would be great because, uh, you know, um, she's always down to play that character, it seems like, mm-hmm. even if it's, like, for, like, a couple seconds. So, um, yeah, bring her on back, I say, right? Like, she even had two yeah. seasons of her own show. Yeah, that will be really cool. And it just – it really makes me wonder the what they'll get up to in Doctor Strange, right? It just mm-hmm. seems, like, limitless of just, like, this is the great place to throw every cameo you've ever wanted to see. Right. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to see Haley Atwell uh, roll back into this role. Yeah, I and uh, Sam Raimi again in, in it. I believe uh, 
uh, what's his name, Danny, uh, Danny Elfman is doing the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Like you know, this is this is like a a really. I think it's gonna be really fun. But like, I also don't want to get bogged down and like, oh, there's that person. Oh, there's that person, kind of thing the whole way through. Because don't worry, I don't think we're gonna have a, a Space Jam, a new Legacy uh, itis when it comes to this. I really, really hope not. But everyone's ma- everyone's making cameos and everything's right now, Mike. That's what it sounds like. Um, yeah. So we'll we'll talk about some more about that in a second. Spider-Man No Way Home. Where are we? Don't have anything on this yet. Uh, literally, the, the the theaters are even using fan-made posters to promote the films at this point because <laughs> the theaters have nothing. It is coming up around the corner. Uh, there is um, a a rumor that uh, this could be delayed, depending on how um, the uh, I guess the pandemic plays out coming mm-hmm. up here with. Um, you know, potential variants, booster shots, who knows what's going to happen in the next few months. Uh, they've kind of been playing coy on this one because they don't know if it will get a delay or not. Um, Spider-Man would be the movie that would break box office records, I think, even outside of a pandemic. So, um, Especially if they're bringing over other Spider-Man from the other movies. So this has got to be something I believe that needs to, to hit on a really, really good note and with, with a lot of people in there, right? Mm-hmm. So... Um, I believe I even showed you this tweet where uh, we they literally have no trailers. Um, you and Morgan, we're going to see another Venom to Let There Be Carnage trailer before we see a first No Way Home trailer. So yeah, it was from a verified Twitter account, and it felt like it felt like a threat, right? Yeah. It was just like, no, you're going to have to suffer through more Venom before yeah. you get another Spider-Man trailer. But yeah. I guess I, I I always feel like we deserve the trailer a lot sooner than we ever get them. So usually when I start to feel like, shouldn't we have a trailer for that by now? Usually means we're probably like two months away from actually getting it. Mm -hmm. And I I keep forgetting that like this movie is later in the year. It's it's December, right? Yeah, it's Uh, December 18th. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, we got a little while ago. Like we're only like halfway through the year right now. Six months. So so I I, I feel like it'll it'll be a little while. Or I guess five five months. Yeah, I I think – well, we we also for the first time ever have like still have two more Marvel movies in between it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Shang Chi and the Eternals, and then Spider Man in the back half of this, and a, and a bunch more uh, Disney Plus shows we'll talk about too. Um, but uh, grinding that rumor mill, Charlie Cox recently canceled a Comic Con appearance the same weekend that Spider Man No Home reshoots are going on. So they are. Drawing these lines at a furious rate. Uh, to I love it. Charlie Cox in Spider-Man No Way Home. I love it because this is the first, I feel like, bit of actual evidence that we've had to back up this rumor that people have been throwing around Daredevil and Charlie Cox coming back into the MCU for, like, I feel like over a year now, right? But it's yeah. always just, like, rumors, right? Or, like, uh, theory, or, like, or oh my undetermined gosh, I, yeah. sources or, like, you know, we're down at, like, the deli outside the studio as somebody's talk- talking about Charlie or something. So I felt like even though this is, like, a little bit of, like, you know, a little bit of, like, red uh, red string down in the, down in the cellar, it does kind of lead yeah. at least to thinking, yeah, this, this could be it, right? It, you know, he could cancel it for a million reasons, right? But... It, it, it does, does coincidentally line up on reshoots. Well, it, you say a million reasons. The reason is filming conflict. And currently, after doing some research, he has no other projects that he's working on right now. Uh, the only other thing could be is if he's they, they've had to shuffle around She-Hulk shooting. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe due to the fan clamoring for Charlie Cox being back, you know, based on rumors. They decided to put him in for the first time. I mean, I mean, this is this kind of goes back to when we were talking about Kang a few weeks ago. Like, I, I wouldn't be upset, you know, whether uh, he does or doesn't show up in the MCU. But like, I just don't think I need a rehash of all of his stories that were over on Netflix, right? So yeah. we start to go, okay, well, how does he get into this universe now? Does he jump in from like a portal, just like some of these other like uh, previous Spider Men are going to, and it's just going to be a bit of a cameo? You know, that's fine too. Do they really want to fold that version of Daredevil, the hero, into the MCU where he could like legitimately like come across these characters? Like, okay, well, how do you do that? Because uh, Charlie Cox is um, the character that he's playing, uh, Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock is a real person, right, with friends and connections to his community. If you just rip him out of all of that, like, you're going to have to, there's a big story you're going to have to deal with there, right? Like him, Lonesome, like Karen Page, Foggy, uh, his whole practice, you know, all of his neighborhood. I think, wasn't his mother also revealed in, like, the third 
season, I, I, right? There's there's a way for this to be to be worked on, and, and and we actually have some news on that later as well. Okay. So 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 let me let me can I let's put a pin in that. Let me come back to that one here. All right. Because I want to talk. The other thing is that Vincent D'Onofrio is now rumored to be in the Hawkeye show. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, as a kingpin and returning in the fifth or sixth episode. Um, so this show is, is supposedly could be tied into Spider-Man No Way Home more than we've expected it to be. Um, that was the thought process. Uh, but the good news on top of that is uh, Victoria Alonso said Hawkeye will debut before the end of the year, um, mm-hmm. which is great because we have no other dates beyond what if of what's happening in the MCU. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, so it's like, so Vincent D'Onofrio, like, the great thing that we loved about the Daredevil series is how humanized and how emotional all of these performances were. That's the one thing that we all loved about Vincent D'Onofrio. He played such a good kingpin, and he was very compelling, and he felt very threatening. So it's just like, if you pull these people out of their universe and, like, drop them into a new one, like, you're you're going to have to rationalize oh, that some bird. way, right? Like, like, these people just can't, we're, like, go back to normal. We, haven't, they can't just, we haven't got to that point yet. Keep put a pin in it. I'm gonna we're gonna right. wrap we're gonna wrap I'm gonna wrap this up for you, Mike. I've got this mm-hmm. for you. So let's let's just keep rolling through this. I got I, I think we'll we'll talk about this. So Yelena Belova from Black Widow will appear in multiple mm-hmm. episodes of Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. That's good. Great. Miss Marvel also will be on Disney Plus before uh, 2021 uh, before 2022. So if we we did the math right, like Miss Mar- do you think Miss Marvel or Hawkeye will be right after? What if? I'm thinking Hawkeye because it's so yeah, close it to seem, Black Widow. Yeah, it seems like Hawkeye, and we've heard about that uh, production for a while. We've seen yeah. more set photos from Hawkeye, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did the math a little bit. If they decided to air this literally the week after What If ended, and if What If runs you know, those 10 episodes and they don't yep. double up any weeks, uh, if they run that and then they run the next show, Same which you know, might be Miss, uh, Miss Marvel, if they run six episodes, uh, they're going to run past the end of the year, right? And usually streaming services and networks don't usually like to do that. They don't want to put, especially like season finales, like during like the holiday season, Seasons, like when people are traveling or they're busy with family, they don't they don't want to miss that new cycle of just like, oh, did you see that crazy after credit scene at the end of uh, Miss Marvel where like, Captain Marvel showed up from outer space or whatever like that? Just like, no, because I had to go visit like family like a, 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 and like you know all weekend. So well, uh, here's the thing: it's it, it seems like Wednesdays they're gonna have now. to. It seems like they're gonna have to like. Well, e- either way, I, I feel like they're gonna have to like back it up a little bit. Like there's gonna have to be a little bit of overlap somewhere. I, or they run out of weeks in 2021? I I disagree. I think there's gonna be more more weeks in between it than than you think she just said they will debut they didn't say all episodes will be on here so i think it's gonna there's gonna be a week after what if because they always do those making of episodes and then hawkeye then a making of and then miss marvel will start and it will probably run through the end of the year into next year um is my theory on this one um but they did double up on um what was it? Uh, WandaVision episodes out the gate, the, the shorter ones, the half hour mm-hmm. ones. So um, I could totally see them doing that with um, uh, What If, like putting a couple of those if they're 20 minute episodes. So I think this only indicates we're going to get trailers for these sooner than later. Like, yeah, that'd be like, great. If, if, if What If starts, they got to have the next thing like ready to roll, right? Like that's how we did the other ones. So the next part here is Loki. So the separate timelines are now connecting, Mike. That's the point I was, I was, we were getting towards. So if the timelines, like you mentioned, they're not being ripped out of theirs and putting a new one. They're merging. Those people would still be around Charlie Cox and, and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's characters. What do you think about that? So, like, what do you mean by, like, merging? Because, so, like, if, if these are, like, parallel realities, uh, if they're colliding in some way, things have to be shared or swapped. They're not just going to, like, phase over on the top right. of each other. So, it just seems like that's not going to work. <laughs> right. Well, it, but it's fine. But, like, so the, the, the showrunner of, of Loki, oh, I, I can't think of her name, uh, said that the, 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 if you look, the branches are not all separate, right? Some of them have actually come back around and are touching each other again. Uh, in, in, implying a colliding um, timeline. So yes, there could be emerging. This could be how the Spider-Man's multiples, you know, introduce each other, right? Like maybe they're not parallels. Maybe their universes all clash together. So they're not jumping through through portals. There will be some sort of merging. We don't know what that will be. Yeah. But I think if you're gonna get those characters from the Netflix shows over, with all their history and all, everything with them, rather than create them new from the ground up, that this is how you're gonna do it. 
Yeah, um, I mean, I'm just trying to think of like what is the longevity of it, right? Like, if we yeah. just want to see Daredevil like pop up and do like a kick-ass action scene with like Spider-Man, and they you know take out uh, a couple of goons, and then at the end of the movie, or maybe at the end of Doctor Strange, and they fix all this Nexus stuff, and Charlie Cox, uh, you know, Matt Murdock goes back to his own own universe, like that's totally fine. I'm just trying to think of think back of to like Spider-Verse, right? The last time like we've kind of really seen a feature film, I guess, tackle something superhero dimensional wise like imagine if all of those characters that came to help miles morales in his world were just like stuck there permanently right like mm -hmm. the entirety of the plot of that story was getting these people back home to their right. normal worlds and if they were just like stuck in miles morales's world it's like yeah they can hang out with miles every once in a while and probably fight fight, fight some crime but they left a lot behind right. there so th that's all i'm thinking and but that and, and then i'm not even like i'm not even like uh, uh, upset or like disappointed or nervous i just think it's kind of exciting because i'm really curious what yeah. they're going to do because it's like talk about like a huge sandbox where like so many decisions can be made and so many things can be so easily explained right like yeah. Like, if you want to bring back, like, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, like, I, we used to think, like, that's the dumbest thing ever. How are you going to explain that in a Spider-Man movie? But now you have, like, the easiest Swiss Army yeah. knife to do it. It's just like, yeah, it's a multiverse. We're just going right. to pull him from a portal well, or something. Well, it's that's be it. great. Well, that's if they're pulling him. I think if the timelines are connecting, we're going to see something different. And those characters, I mean, maybe maybe they don't know that there's different timelines. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, but, like, I think – I don't think – Charlie Cox will not be Daredevil and Spider-Man. That'll be way too much going on. I think he'll just be uh, Matt Murdock, um, the lawyer. And then um, what, maybe the Kingpin views it more as an opportunity, right? Like, oh, I'm in this world now. I can do whatever. But I don't think – I think the difference between Spider-Man is they were plucked out and put in this universe, but they, they weren't really merging and crossing. Yeah, it just uh, – yeah, they just – as long as they can find a good way to describe yeah. it. I, I think what, the, what we have to do as fans is become maybe a little bit more malleable – because I was talking about this before we started recording, is I'm starting to see a lot of MCU theories now pop up in my uh, TikTok timeline, right? TikTok is starting to understand my needs and desires, and now I'm starting to get MCU stuff. And some of these theories, I think, are really out of bounds, and some people are going a little bit too deep, and they're just falling into the same traps that they fell in with the first season of WandaVision, right? Where they just looked a little too deep. And now some people are doing this insanity where they say, if you play the last episode of WandaVision <laughs> and you click play on the last episode of Loki at the same time uh, that uh, Kang has his... I'm just going to keep calling him Kang because it's, it's just the easiest yeah, thing yeah, to yeah. do. Yes. Kang has his magical revelation in his head of just like, did you feel that? Everything's everything's so, different now. It lines up perfectly yeah. like when WandaVision becomes like the Scarlet Witch. And I was just like, no, you need... Everyone needs a full stop. This is not what happens. The, the only reason it probably even slightly lines up is just just story structure and they're roughly 30 minute Pacing. episodes so you gotta yeah. hit like these certain marks that's probably the only reason it might feel like that but this is like you people are going like way too far and I also saw, saw somebody who was like over analyzing the first Doctor Strange movie and it was just like oh when the ancient one uh, is uh, talking with uh, Steven before he gets all of his power she literally says the word so, multiverses when she's doing all this stuff and it's just like some people you just gotta realize that when some of these scripts were written like years ago they just were using cool words right like I literally don't think when somebody wrote the word multiverse in the first Doctor Strange movie they got the keyword from up on high from Kevin Feige to use the word multiverse. I think it's just a cool word to use, and it works well with this magical I, stuff. So, like, some people are they're they're putting they're using too much red string. <laughs> so, I, I I disagree with multiverse because I think that it, it, that's able to explain Doctor Strange's power in a good way, and I think that they got that in that. But I do agree. So, uh, listener to the show, Marshall, uh, shout out to him. He actually sent me that video early on in the week, and I I agree with you. I don't agree with it. I think if you take any two pieces of media and play them at the right time, you can sync up whatever you want. Mm. Um, this is the whole, oh, Dark Side of the Moon lines up with the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes, kind exactly. Of, you can line up anything you want. That I don't think they're related. If it is, it, uh, I mean, it, it's a fun Easter egg, but I don't think it's intentional. I think it's just like, again, writing a TV show, pacing is everything, right? Like, it's the same pacing, same thing. It's fun. It, it could be it could be a reality, but, like, it's not a, a hard and fast rule to live by. Mm. Well, that. also... 
And I'm not saying that the stuff that happened in the first Doctor Strange movie also couldn't just be a happy accident, right? right. Like, so when you're coming back to write this Doctor Strange movie, he's like, oh, yeah, we did all, some of this cool stuff that really lines up with a lot of the stuff that happened in Loki. You know, we're, we're off to the races now. But, like, when you just said Doctor Strange pulls his power from, uh, you know, these other, you know, universes. dimensions, right? Yeah. These other universes. Well, theoretically, if you're kind of looking at this timeline, right, there isn't other universes, right? There's only this grand timeline that uh, that Kang has been holding together perfectly for a really long time, as far as we know. So, theoretically, shouldn't you think that sorcerers shouldn't have any powers until the timeline starts to fracture and these other dimensions start to grow, and then you would think that their powers would start to grow from that? So, that, that's what I'm saying is just like, and also they start to say things like, you know, oh, like the mirror dimension. Okay, well, what's the difference between a dimension and a multiverse? And then what's the difference between like the quantum realm right and i think really at the end of the day the answer was when somebody wrote these comic books back in the day they just wanted some yeah. cool shit that characters could play in right they just wanted a cool area that these uh that these adventures could happen in and now they're translating to the screen so this i think this is just like a broader like psa of just like don't dive too deep for too long or you just might end up getting disappointed right like and this isn't this also isn't even a um this isn't even like giving them like a lot of slack if they screw it up or anything yeah. like that. I just think like they're they're doing like the best they can with this uh with this roadmap right. well, that they've put down. It's the same. I was talking this, this week when when um you know uh, what's his name uh, Joss Whedon wrote the Avengers. They didn't have that Avengers script in Pine when they wrote the original movies. Right when they planned on it's all together, it was just fun. Right, it was mm -hmm. it was great. They had an Avengers script. Hulk was supposed to be the bad guy. You see that at the end of in uh, the Incredible Hulk. Right when Tony Stark comes to recruit Thunderbolt Ross didn't work out so they had to rewrite a new script all those again great moments were added up into something big but they weren't planned to be that exact movie at that time mm -hmm. so I, can they do it again hell yeah they can do it again Marvel's got whatever they want under their the thing they have the will they have the good faith of everyone because they've yes. made 23 great 24 now great movies yeah that's uh, the great way to put it they have the good faith uh, they have the reputation they they've made a couple like uh, uh below average movies but like yeah. that's the great thing about the MCU it's so easy to recommend to people because even if they don't know anything about any of these characters and they just randomly pick a movie it's gonna be better than most of the stuff that's out there usually most of the Complaints that people have is once you watch all of them together, you might start to see maybe a, a, maybe a bit of like a safeness across all of them. But I mean, like, like come on, Snake Eyes just came out, and I have not heard very good things about Snake Eyes. Yeah. So it's just like, are you going to roll the dice on a Hasbro toy franchise or maybe a comic? Book well, franchise? I mean, I would, I, I mean, I would take any MCU movie, even the Dark World, which has now become the <laughs> linchpin of the MCU, over Wonder Woman eighty four. Mm -hmm. Like literally, what could have been their best movie? I would take any, even the worst MCU movie in, in my book, over it any day, any day of the week. So you you got to earn that, and and they, yeah. I believe they had, and you know sometimes they may be safe, but guess what? It's fun. It's all connected. Now we have TV shows and uh, animation and it's all going down a really good yeah. path. So. You gotta earn that goodwill like, uh, I mean, God, th there's so many things wrong with that new Space Jam movie, right? But when you got to see, um, what's that, what's the female bunny's name? Uh, oh, I don't Lola. Remember. Lola. When Lola's doing like the uh, Themyscira trials and stuff like yeah. that, that, which is, you know, a lot of the visual design of that scene was brought from like the Wonder Woman universe yeah. and it very much feels like the the opening shot of uh, Wonder Woman 84 and I was just like, ugh, this just feels really bad because I didn't like that movie. Right. But but I think, but that but um, but uh, the animated version was much cooler to see because you know, it's the yeah. adult one being in charge of mm -hmm. Themyscira. So, yeah, I, I um yeah, like so the timelines can come back together. We have a lot of opportunity here to see how these timelines touch and and like, you know, if they want to bring in other, you know, franchises, you know, things they didn't own before now that they own them, this is an opportunity to, to reference those easily and be like, "Yeah, we got that. Move along." Um and ma and literally make it all connected. They've bought so much, they can make it all connected through money, Mike. That's mm -hmm. that's where we are. <laughs> Into the Star Wars universe, uh, are you familiar who um, Ezra Bridger and General Thrawn are? Uh, Ezra, that character was from Rebels, right? Right. So mm -hmm. the rumor is that Mina Masoud, who played Aladdin in the live-action movie, uh, will mm -hmm. play uh, Ezra Bridger in in the movie, in the series. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a series, not a movie. And then that, um, Lars Mikkelsen, who voiced General Thrawn in the Rebels, 
show, we'll do the live action version of him as well. That's cool. I mean, I, he must be at least relatively close to a look that they're looking for. But, you know, they're yeah. pa- they're going to paint him with blue or they're going to put some tracking dots on mm-hmm. him so uh, they can always massage the face a little bit. You know, uh, I'm not saying like voice actors can't uh, act in live action, but, you know, usually uh, you, you get lucky, yeah. right, if the voice well, actor matches so, up with the character. So Lars Mikkelsen is an actor, first and foremost. He's the brother of Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, uh, I was going to say that last name can't be that yeah, common. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, he's, he's, he's the brother of that. Uh, Lars Mikkelsen, he was in um, if you watch the uh, Sherlock TV show, uh, he uh, was it like the villain of like one uh, of the later. I'm seasons. looking at him right now. Oh, he could totally be Thrawn. You don't even really have to do. He, I, I mean, I, yeah. I don't mean to say this to him, but he's kind of got a menacing looking face, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and and he, um, you know, he's uh, he's older. Thrawn will be older by that point. So I mean, mm-hmm. like he he is he's got that look. He doesn't have to pull off evil thing. But if he's already doing the voice, then boom, nailed it, right? Like mm-hmm. this is one of those happy accidents. Uh, people thought, you know, they wanted Benedict Cumberbatch, but he's too young, I think, to be to be in this role of this character. But um, yeah, he's got a he's got a he's got a voice actor. He was in Naruto, uh, a couple of his, <laughs> a couple of characters back then, looking right. at his list there. So um, that's cool. I'm excited for Ahsoka. I need to probably go back and watch Rebels um, after I f- after the Bad Batch wraps up. That way, I watch them at yeah. least chronologically. So I'm probably going to do one of those like essential episode watches yeah. of uh, watch the ones that uh, they think are going to season uh, and do. Season Ahsoka one was was not for me. So I'm hoping I've heard two like it's like one of those like the first ones are like we have to you know you know get kids on board and then we can go to adults kind of thing. So mm-hmm. hopefully uh, season two and on. But you know Dave Filoni. I trust him, and, and Dave we trust over here, so uh, we'll check that out. Michael B. Jordan, not only is he probably one of the highlights of Space Jam, a new legacy, <laughs> uh, he is out creating uh, the Val Zod version of Superman in a series for HBO Max. Uh, so this is not the Cal l Superman that Tanisi Coates and J.J. Abrams are working on for the Warner Brothers in theater uh, this will be uh, the different version, the Earth 2 version of Superman, if you will. Bring it uh, on. Bring so, it on. I love it. So Val Zod is uh, technically uh, the a, a black Superman who was in the, the comic books. Um, and this will adapt that story from the comic books and not race bend the Kal-El version like the other one is. So that's what, what he said. Um, so Val Zod was found by uh, this person, Terry Sloan, and raised to become Earth 2 Superman. He's got similar powers. from you know, Kryptonian is just a little different. Um, the rumor here is um, that uh, Michael B. Jordan was tied to the first one, but he didn't want to do the Cal L version. He wanted to do a, a, a different one, a unique one. So Warner Brothers passed, went to Abrams, and then HBO Max called him up and was like, "Hey, actually, can we do this with you?" So mm-hmm. um, I think that's cool. He might star in it too. I mean, that'd be pretty cool to see him play Superman, right? Like, yeah, it, it's just really crazy to see um, just. Uh, we're, we're great that uh, television production has improved so much over the years, right? It's just, it's really hard to imagine back in the day that, like, uh, a, a high-tier Superman show yeah. could exist, like, something episodic, because it's just so special effects heavy. But now, yeah. like, uh, special effects is really only limited by the budget, right? And streaming services that are competing yeah. with each other have a lot of budget that they're around. Yeah. But, so I, I feel like they could pull it off really well. Well, it, it also kind of makes me interested to know what the dynamic is between Warner Brothers Studios proper and HBO Max over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if, if they can just kind of, like, go out and flex on their own, right? Yeah, like, hey, <laughs> actually, uh, they pass on you, we'll take you, uh, kind of thing so that, that's interesting to kind of kind of hear what that dynamic is as well and you know for, for, for Michael B. Jordan to go from literally um, Fantastic Four fan four stick to <laughs> Killmonger and then to Superman would just be fantastic for him right like that that's a that's a redemption story in and of itself so um, good for him I'm interested I'm interested to kind of see if this comes to fruition I, I would love to see it on there uh, because we got some other news that the um, Batgirl, I believe it's a show coming to uh, HBO Max, has uh, cast uh, Barbara Gordon with Leslie Grace, who's the actress from In the Heights. Um, which was, she we, the, we, was she the one that was trying to go back to college? Yes, right? the one who didn't want okay. to go back to college, yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, we talked to him last week, who's in Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I can't think of his name off the top. Jimmy uh, Smith. Jimmy Smith, yeah, is. yeah. His, uh, his daughter. So, yeah, so she has been cast as Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl, in the show. So um, they've also announced that this will be directed by Adil El Arby and Bilal Falah. 
I probably butchered those. They uh, did the Bad Boys for Life movie and also several episodes of Miss Marvel um, that are mm-hmm. coming out. And then it's written by Christina Hodson, who is very much in the DC world right now, Warner Brothers. She did Birds of Prey. She's writing the Flash, the most recent Flash movie script, and did Bumblebee. For them I there. mean, I know I have said like a thousand times on this show, like now I'm officially old. But here's just another example of earlier in the week, there was like a short list that came out before this is officially announced. And it was like uh, a total of like four actresses that were in line for this role. And I just looked at this grid of four people and I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. And it makes sense, right? Because you're, you're casting at a certain age and like I, just that kind of a slice of pop culture I've just not been attached to. So I, I honestly didn't even know when I saw her picture in that lineup that she was from In the Heights uh, because you got to, I feel like you got to be exposed to an actor at least more than once to kind of recognize mm-hmm. their face out of context, right? So, um, I mean, it, yeah, uh, I, I thought she performed well in that movie, so I'm sure she could make a great Batgirl. Yeah, it, it also didn't help that they all kind of looked the same too. Uh, yeah, but also at the same time when you're like dwindling it down to like one yeah. role, the last four people probably will all kind of look yeah. the same, right? They, they've got to they've look. now, And there, there has been, uh, unfortunately, a lot of lashback. Like, oh, you can't have a an african-american batgirl well uh, jim gordon is being played by jeffrey wright in Mm -hmm. the movie so yes you can because technically it's his daughter so Uh, does that does that make us think then that this batgirl series will be connected to the matt reeves universe possibly because it's not totally certain how much of the matt reeves batman will filter down to hbo max i know there's plans but like best laid plans right (laughs) they have the the gotham pd show which is like the prequel or whatever it is Mm -hmm. but i don't know that that's that opens up the question is this related to that or not because you know they did hire Christina Hudson, who works slowly on movies to do the series. Yeah, and right. does that mean that this Batgirl could potentially cross over with Michael B. Jordan's, like, Superman, right? Like, it yeah. does make you wonder, like, I don't know if I particularly want, like, a bunch of fractured TV shows on HBO Max. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I hope they're all good, and I hope, you know, they're entertaining and outright, and they yeah. stand alone on their own, but it's just, like... If I'm going to, like, invest, like, hours and hours of my life into multiple, like, streaming series, like, at least give me, give me, like, a multi, give me, like, a multiplier, like, a a combo, um, what do they call it, like, a combo multiplier? Uh, So, like, when I watch these shows one after another, they they just get better because they're even more uh, interconnected. Well, I think, I think they're going to have to probably, I mean, I don't want them to take the CW effect, right, where they only want the Flash and the Arrow were in the same universe, and then they started, like, oh, we, we were able to get Supergirl because we made a device that crosses universe or something like mm-hmm. that because she was on CBS. And then, like, I'm pretty sure um, – what, what's the other show that's on there that's ending? Um, Black Lightning uh, was it in the same mm-hmm. universe, and then they merged it in the universe later. Like, there's too much going on over there. Do it right over here, and we'll, we'll, we'll probably be way more on board than, than yes, trying please. to keep up with that. Yes, please. Lastly, uh, we're obviously huge Witcher fans here, right? Uh, big, big Witcher <laughs> nerds, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we we do our best. <laughs> yeah, we try. We, we try. We, we have Google. Uh, yeah. So, The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, uh, the anime, I would say, series. Is it? Would you say this is anime? Uh, I feel Netflix? like the, I feel like Netflix is really stretching the word anime yeah. and just using it as more of of a uh, marketing uh, term. Yeah. But you know, sure, whatever. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's got some anime aspects to it. It's animated. Uh, based on Vesemir, the mentor of Geralt in his, his younger days, uh, the trailer has landed. Uh, this is the first time his past has been explored in any media, and he's voiced by Theo James, who did Hector in Castlevania. So I thought you'd... Because uh, I kept looking, I kept hearing, I'm like, I know this guy's voice. I know this guy's voice. Who is it? Well, it, it, like, even though the art style in this trailer is uh, slightly, uh, not slightly, it's definitely different than uh, America the Motion Picture, they're doing this same thing that's making me a lot more excited, where it was, I, I hate it, uh, back in the day when a lot of these CG animated cartoons could not pull off the 2D look, right? Like, they wanted to use the CG tools because it helps the, it helps the production uh, move along and do a lot more dynamic, like, cameras and action and stuff like that, but they couldn't get away from that kind of like crappy like cg look but now uh what i I feel like this trailer did a really good job where there's like some frames that just straight up looks like it's a 2d animated but then when the characters start to move a little you do start to see the volume and like the faces and stuff but it all looks really good so they found a really good way like now to really merge like the cg tools to get like uh i would say like a 2.5d look 
Yeah, it, 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 to me, some of the animation, some of the some of the artwork, honestly hits me with uh, Avatar Legend of Korra designs a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, and you know that kind of gives me like that um, American interpretation of anime style. But it, 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 I'm I'm not complaining. This is by no means a complaint. This actually looks pretty cool. Um, it looks really fun. Uh, I see him. You know, we see him drink his Witcher potions. He's got like a big battle with some sort of creature. Uh, uh, and like a beast in front of him it, later. It, like, it's funny that you mentioned Avatar because I, I'm looking into the description now, and it says it's from Studio Mur, which is the same studio that worked on uh, Legend of Korra and yeah. stuff like uh, like Voltron, which was over on Netflix. So yeah, uh, yeah, I was trying to see if this studio worked on um, Dragon Prince at all, and I'm not seeing it. But I do kind of get Dragon Prince vibes from it a little bit as well. Uh, but the Dragon Prince kind of emulates a little bit of like a stop motion effect. And this doesn't have that at all, but yeah, it just looks really, really good. Um, it, it does make me wonder because I feel like every time you get like a one-off anime thing on Netflix, it just seems like very much a one-off thing. So I wonder, is this something that the, would ever develop a second season? So, you know, so the character Vesemir will play very heavily in season two of The Witcher. Mm-hmm. So that's why this is coming out uh, August twenty-third. Uh, with The Witcher coming out in December, so it's like to help build up that character a little bit more. But I could totally mm-hmm. see them be like, "Oh yeah, we've got all this, you know, a- again uh, prequel stuff that you know we could tell all these stories because there's nothing there, and kind of kind of keep going through this character." I I I think if there's enough popularity, they could easily do it very very easily. I'm, I'm very excited for this actually. Yeah, Netflix is doing a really good job with uh with adult centered, especially action animation. Uh, I don't I don't know if it, we can go as far to say a renaissance yet, but they're they're doing a really they good are, job. They are putting in the work to, to crank it out. I'll tell you mm-hmm. that. like they are really doing it uh, a good job with that. And, and you know, honestly, if I was to get a Netflix subscription, it would be to watch all their animated stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to dive back into that because I'm I'm very thrilled again I'm excited for next week's <laughs> War for Cybertron to, to wrap up because that is the Beast Wars season with all the Beast Wars again. So. Are you gonna Are you gonna watch it with all of your uh, new uh, oh, Beast yeah, Wars I toys around? You get y'all gonna sit on the couch? Are you gonna are you gonna give them a little cup and some popcorn? Oh yeah yeah well yeah well some of them want hot dogs somewhat you know, <laughs> so yeah well I'll make sure they have a nice open jar of jalapenos Mike just oh, for you, you know say. the the ideal movie snack right yeah, yeah they will definitely be in their Transformers form not their Beast form while watching the movie. That is that is rule in my house, so. Um, but no, uh, yeah. Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf comes out August twenty third. Looks really cool. Should be a pretty good primer for for season two. Mike, that's our that's our news this week. We got it. We got through it. Uh, we're we're in the, the the last vestige, the last week of July coming up here. Hopefully, we get some good stuff for the for the fall things. Um, some new stuff going that way. But if people don't know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at, my friend? They can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram, Valdan87, or uh, Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N. People will know more about the show. Go listen to that Black Widow review we did or our Loki review um, for the season finale. Where can they find those at? Oh, all you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the hub for the show. That is our helicarrier where you can find everything, uh, including our show notes. So if you want to check out any of the trailers that we talked about today or that, uh, the rumor mill from Spider-Man No Way Home that is being fed by Twitter. We got yes. all of those links in our show notes. And you can uh, get our podcast at Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from from you please reach out even if you're finding like crazy rumors and theories out there that make no sense whether you think we'll like them or hate them uh we love talking about yeah. them either way at any direction send them our way uh we, we love that kind of stuff um and if you want to be a super fan of the show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy make sure you're vaccinated so you can dodge that delta variant out there and uh we'll be here every week folks yeah that's right we'll see you next week bye Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. I bought two pairs of shoes this week, Mike. I'm, I have the most pairs of shoes right now that I've <laughs> ever had at any point in my entire uh, uh, life. Is that two? Is two pairs? Is that the most? <laughs>